Today, we're going to talk about four really, really powerful, important things to help you lower your risk for cancer. But I think the most important thing is to understand what cancer is and how it became cancer in the first place. Cancer originates from normal cells. So in other words, they're not just something like a virus that just comes from something external. It comes from within. In other words, there's something that happens in your environment that creates destruction of a part of your cell called the mitochondria. And because the mitochondria has one really important function of producing energy for your body, when that cell no longer gets the energy, it has a backup program. So cancer really is an adaptation to um, a different energy source because the mitochondria is no longer providing energy. And all this information I'm gonna share with you right now comes from a fascinating paper and I'm going to put that information below in the description. So normally the cell uses this type of metabolism to get its energy. When it converts over into a cancer, it uses this type of energy right here. It's not important to know the technical names. All you need to know is that cancer's metabolism is a different type of metabolism. And I will mention one thing, which is the Warburg effect, which allows cancer to get its fuel from a different thing. The actual source of mitochondria in our cells really originated from a bacteria. In other words, um, the mitochondria has all the properties of some bacteria that long ago came into our cells and somehow there was an agreement that it would work together and it would provide a certain function in the cell, which is producing energy and many other things. And the cell would provide a home to the mitochondria. And apparently one of the ancient programs in the mitochondria was this type of um, energy uh, system. When there seems to be a lot of stress or damage within this, this system, it converts over to that system and we call that cancer. But the mitochondria is not just about producing energy. It also helps you balance and metabolize iron and calcium and make hormones and make neurotransmitters and make melatonin, which is all about sleep. There's a lot of crosstalk between the mitochondria and the circadian clock in your body that run the different cycles, including the sleep cycles, uh, and gut microbes and immune cells. So your mitochondria does a lot. The mitochondria is really the pivot point between health and disease. And when the mitochondria becomes damaged and that cell turns into a cancer cell, some interesting things occur. First of all, that cancer cell becomes immortal. So it loses uh, any type of uh, program to die. The cancer cell also produces inflammation and it seems to grow and spread into areas of inflammation, including old injuries. The other unique thing about when this normal cell turns into a cancer cell is it now has a certain advantage where it can resist death, okay? Because normally our cells, when they become damaged, uh, they go through this thing called apoptosis where they commit suicide and they take themselves out, but not cancer cells. They resist this apoptosis. They resist also the growth of uh, tumor suppressor cells. So in our bodies, we have the ability to suppress tumors. Apparently cancer resists that. So that's kind of a survival mechanism. It also counters the immune attack on itself. So I wanted to give you a little background because in order to reduce your risk of getting cancer, it's really about reducing your risk of developing damage to the mitochondria, okay? And then what can you do to restore the mitochondria? That should be the focus. Cancer is just the name of something, but to really understand what's happening can give you um, an understanding of how to undo this because reducing the risk means we need to figure out how to reverse this process right here. All right, so one big risk factor for cancer is excess food and excess glucose. So by eating a lot of food and very often and sugary food, that puts you at a major risk for getting cancer. And so the opposite of that is fasting. So fasting is one of the most powerful things that you can do uh, to prevent cancer. And I'm talking about intermittent fasting as well as periodic prolonged fasting, okay? So you fast for you know a few days or longer. Now, before I explain that, I'm just gonna talk about number two, being sedentary. Now, you wouldn't think being sedentary is a cause of 
damage to the mitochondria. But because of all the stress and things that actually uh, we're exposed to, being sedentary apparently is a cause. And so therefore, exercise is number two most potent thing you can do to help avoid cancer. Now, both fasting and exercise do similar things. They both induce something called the anti-Warburg effect. So they directly counter the shift, okay? And they help you bring yourself back over here. There's some really interesting data talking about how both of these things right here can remodel part of your mitochondria. And when I talk about remodel, I'm talking about repairing it. And I'm talking about something called the, and I'm going to give you a big word now, electron chain transport. This is like a really important part of this machine whereby we're extracting these electrons from food and then forming ATP. Most of the energy currency of the body, the ATP, is made by this electron transport chain. And guess what? Fasting and exercise helps to remodel this part of this machine. Also, both fasting and exercise triggers autophagy. Autophagy is a condition that helps recycle old damaged proteins as well as damaged mitochondria. And so we want uh, some autophagy going on to do that as well. Fasting and exercise also increase insulin sensitivity, which can also decrease the risk. And there's something even cooler. Apparently, fasting has this very special property to help the cancer cells lose their advantages. It causes the cancer cell to no longer resist death. So fasting makes the cancer cell vulnerable to being destroyed. And it strengthens our normal cells. And even if someone does chemotherapy, it makes the normal cells stronger to resist the chemicals, which is very, very cool. So these two things are extremely important. Let's talk about number three, circadian misalignment. What is that? It means that there's something going wrong with your circadian waves, which mainly we're going to focus on sleep. So a good night rest, both in number of hours and quality is going to be very, very essential to reducing your risk of cancer. But why? Because there's a huge crossover link between the circadian waves and the mitochondria, and also between sleep and the lowering of cortisol and your immune system. Realize too, when you increase cortisol, you actually shut down the immune system. Also, melatonin, the main sleep hormone, uses this system to work. Okay, it doesn't use this system. This is why people with chronic disease, including cancer, usually always have problems with their circadian clocks and their sleep cycles. And then number four, this is interesting, loneliness, social isolation, not only will double the risk of diabetes, but it also increases the risk of cancer. Socializing with others, with groups, with individuals is just as essential as good healthy food and water and exercise. Now, there are a lot more items to unload from this article that I want to give you. Go to my website. I'll put the link down below of all 15 ways to lower your cancer risk. So go ahead and click the link down below, and I will see you on the other side. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.